Hi guys, it's Blackie and welcome back to the channel. And this is the second installment on Mastering the Canteen Cup Cooking Series. As I said before, this series is going to be in three parts. Part one, we're going to deal with canteen cup cooking. And there's going to be quite a few videos of me showing individual recipes in it. And then we're going to shift over to bush pot cooking. That'll be part two, so to speak. And we'll do bush pot several recipes. And then finally, we'll do we'll touch on a few of the big stuff, like on Dutch ovens, big cook pots. That's where I'm feeding a crowd type deal. But let me back up just a little bit to part one, where I talked about beverages, and I mentioned this, but did not have one to show. Now, if you look in a lot of times in crafts, you'll find these little things. It's just a simple snap top lid with a good snap on. This one snaps on a real good. Okay, took me a minute to get that thing off. Got a little tab on that end, but this is the perfect size for certain beverages. So I put just, I fill this up with tang. That's a half canteen cup. My wife takes these and she puts pre-measured of her favorite instant coffee and her favorite powdered creamer and her favorite powdered sweetener all fit into this at one time. So she'll make up like two or three days ahead. Now don't make up like a month's worth because combining those ingredients due to the moisture content of those various ingredients they'll go bad after like two weeks so she does it for like three or four days in advance so when she comes out in the morning instead of her having to break down every single thing to make up her cup of coffee she just turns on the kettle and grabs this well i carry something like this to carry beverages to the fields like the big kool-aid like the big gatorade like the big tang and things like that that way i can carry it to the field pre-measured to know how much fits in the canteen cup so that's what we we're i mentioned in the last one i want to show you this time and then to this one we're going to move up to cooking but we're going to talk about two different forms of cooking in this one a twofer one is going to be steaming and one is going to be using boiling water okay now everybody thinks about the boiling water and we'll get to that in part two in the second part of this video whenever we're going to be dealing with it but in part one i want to deal with something that a lot of people don't think about and that's steaming steaming can be very useful especially whenever i'm going to try and let's say i'm gathering wild edibles like wood sorrel or some other leafy green thing i'll wash them real good but at the same time i want to kind of sterilize them a little bit right even if it's a leafy green that i'm gonna eat relatively raw who knows what's been crawling on it and rinsing it out in a creek can add stuff to it i don't want to sacrifice my good clean potable water in order to rinse off something like that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to steam it for just a minute or two and here's how to use your canteen cup as a steamer let me get it set up and i'll show you okay you take your heavy aluminum foil that you should be carrying folded up anyway and you're going to take the closed up canteen cup with the handles down and you're going to simply fold it around the base of this just make it push it up there and mold it all the way around to make a pull off second pot now how far up you want to go in certain applications of this i may want the full length of this and in other applications like this i only want about a little over half because what we're going to demonstrate but the point being is we're going to use this as a mold to make this now if we double layer it and put it together like this this can be acting like a second bowl so if i'm going to be cooking something in my canteen cup and i need to transfer it into another container to finish cooking some other device in here it allows me to have a carryable uncluttered un bowl to take and put on my canteen cup by simply molding it and making this this will hold water and I can transfer food out here into here. For example, if I was making spaghetti and I could transfer the noodles out and then make sauce and then transfer it all back to one pot, it becomes a handy little extra, little tip or trick work with you. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill this water, we're gonna put it on the fire and we're gonna get it boiling. Then, okay. let's say my water is getting ready to boil right there. Okay, if I don't have one of these handy grates to sit across there, I can improvise one by simply taking some of these steel tent stakes and laying them across. Now understand, this is going to get hot and you're going to need gloves, okay, because this will get hot. But I can do the same thing by just laying tent stakes across there, like that. Take them off of one like that. There's a handy little trick for you. Now. 
I'll put my grate across right here. And then I'm going to have whatever it is I'm going to steam. Now, what can I steam cook? I can steam cook fish, vegetables, all kinds of stuff, especially if I'm only cooking them to point X. I'm not having to boil them a long time to make them soft. I'm just wanting to keep them from being truly raw. I can take, for this example, let's say a potato, and I can cut it into pieces, lay it up here on the grate, and then take my aluminum foil and set the aluminum foil over the top. Now what this is going to do is as that steam rises, it's going to go into this cap. I want this cap to be much bigger than the food target I'm trying to heat up so the steam can fully circulate around it. Don't just wrap the potato on top and stick it on top. It won't circulate. I need dead air space all the way around so that as that steam rises up there, it will circulate around and it will steam it from all sides. I can steam for just a couple of minutes and be able to make this nice and, and cooked, then take it off with a fork. Another use for this in camp, practical use for in camp, is whenever you come out camping and you've brought bread for sandwiches and it's been a day or two and that bread has dried out and got a little bit stale. You can lay it up here on this, spread this out a little bit and put it over the top and steam that bread for about a minute or so and 30 seconds on the other side and it'll be like fresh bread again. So that's all you got to do in order to use this little device as a cooker. See? Quick and easy. Now, that grate is nice and hot now. So I'm going to take it off just like this. Don't worry about the bread. The birds will love it flames coming up this side pretty good so this is going to heat up now again steaming I can sit there and steam crawfish small pieces of fish things like that I can heat it up I've taken um, those canned salmon steaks canned fish steaks and things with one big hunk of meat in a can and laid it across a um, grate of steel tent steaks and steamed it for just two three minutes and made it nice and tender and warm and it's, it's ready to go we're frying it or something like that wouldn't be the way to do I want it steamed so steam is a very viable cooking source now let's talk about what we're going to be cooking which is a breakfast for this breakfast you're going to need oh one other thing before I get off of water there are other things to consider where the water itself is a cooking medium. Okay? I've mentioned this before in my videos. These are available in your grocery store, made by Hormel, many different flavors. You simply take this cardboard off, and this package will just stand up in there and allow you to heat in this. That is called immersion heating. That's where you're just going to take the package and set it in the boiling hot water and let it boil for about 10 minutes. About halfway through, turn around the other way. So one end ain't cold and the other end's hot. Just turn around the other way and set it back in. And you can heat this up just like you would a microwave at home. Make it ready to go. It's fully cooked. You're just heating it. So immersion heating allows me to take packaging like this and heat it up. A thing you can do when you don't have packages, like let's say you've got a favorite can of ravioli chili whatever it is it's already made up it's already cooked in the can and the can's a little too big although this one will physically sit in there i could open up this can take that wrapper off and sit it into that boiling water and heat it up why would you not just dump it in the pot blackie keep the pot clean by doing that way i just have water it's a clean pot when i eat out of this see i'm not dirtying up the pot the final way as I've said many times, is to take a, listen to me, a name brand quart freezer bag. It has to be a freezer bag. They're much tougher, and they're designed for going from really hot to really cold. So I can take this, dump whatever kind of food into it, and sit that in the water and heat it up. I can also, when we go to later bush pot cooking, where I want this, my wife wants that, my son wants this, my daughter wants that, we can put all four of them into separate Ziploc bags and put them in the same pot of water and heat up everybody's supper at one time without having to dirty the pot. When you get done, you just pour the water out of that canteen cup, 
sit the bag in it, open it up, and eat it straight out of the bag. You'll end up with a clean canteen cup and a dirty bag to get rid of. That's it. Now, now we'll move over to what we're going to be cooking for breakfast this morning. For breakfast this morning, we're going to be making a hash brown omelet. But we're not going to be using hash browns. We're going to be using potato chips. A lot of people don't realize that if you cook with potato chips, the end result when you actually cook it with eggs is it tastes like hash browns. That thin potato is what it is, is all it is. Now, there's plenty of salt in here, so I don't have to add nothing else. But all I'm going to do with this, and there's going to be a technique. That's the trick. I'll sit my eggs down for a second, and I'm going to teach you the technique. You're going to cook in this bag. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to sit down and I'm going to crush up those potato chips. Great thing to do whenever the one that you're bringing for lunch got crushed. Good thing. You ain't got to turn them into powder, but just mash them up real small. Okay? Shake it around a little bit. Mash it some more. Make sure you ain't got a big hunk. Now, now I'm starting to get bubbles. Good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to open this up and you're going to put two chicken eggs into it. And you're going to mash it up in order to stir it around in there. So it's fully saturated and ready to go. And then we're going to sit it in the boiling water. Now, when you sit it in the boiling water, and I'll turn it this way so you can see, the surface that's contacting the water through this Mylar plastic bag, which is food safe plastic, by the way, it's going to be no more than 200 and something degrees, is it? Because at 212, it turns to steam. So we're not going to burn this plastic. We're not going to bring this plastic up into 400 degree temperatures where it becomes toxic. It's too cool for that. It's food safe like this. The other thing is where it's the surface of this, it's going to cook the egg, but the egg in the middle is kind of insulated. So when you look down in the hole, you're going to end up with something that looks kind of like a hot dog bun with a liquid center and the outside edge gets thicker and puffier. You'll see it swell out and get kind of solid. After about, say, eight minutes of being in the boiling water, we need to flip it over so that liquid center pours out and gets cooked. How do you do that? You're going to pick the bag up. We're going to grab one corner down here after it quits dripping. We're going to go squeeze, squeeze, and that hot dog bun, so to speak, inside, when we squeeze it, it'll start standing up. We're going to squeeze, 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 squeeze till we stand it up to one side. When we stand it up to one side, we grab the bottom corner, go squeeze, 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 and swing the bottom out. And so we flipped it. I'm going to do all this in real time, but I want you to understand what we're doing. Okay, now, let me turn the camera back down. I'll crack the eggs and mix it up and set it in the water, and we'll start cooking. Okay. I'm going to open up my frito lays. Sitting right there. I'm going to take my first egg out. I'm going to crack my egg. And I'm going to dump that egg into the bag without dumping the whole thing into the floor. I know. I'm out of camera. Just a minute. You just have to trust me. I dropped an egg in there. Now we drop this one out of the way. Sit down on flat. Just like that. Alright, come up here. Break the egg into it. Just like that. And now we have two eggs inside. Now we're just going to sit there and knead it together. Making sure we scrush the yolks. Start from the bottom, squeeze it up, push from the top, squeeze it down. As you can see, my water is now boiling. And as soon as I get that fully maturated and it's all good and mixed together, now I take and I set it into that boiling water just like that. Now I start my timer and I'm going to wait about eight minutes. And I'll be back in eight minutes to show you how we're going to flip it. Okay. See the water's been going good. You look in there. You see how it's cooking on the sides. But that center is still a little bit wet. Okay. It's been about six minutes. I'm going to set the camera down. In about another minute and a half, I'm going to flip it. And I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Okay. Our omelet now has had the time. So I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to let the water drip off of it. Because that hot water will get you. Okay, so then shake it for just a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to 
take one corner. I'm going to take this other corner down here and I'm going to squeeze it. And I'm going to force it to roll over just like that. And it's not going to burn you. It's just going to be hot. Come on now. There we go. Now it's rolled to that side. Now I'm going to take this corner and I'm going to push and it splits over. Now I set it back in that water and give it about another two minutes and it's going to be ready. So I'll be back in about two minutes and we'll take it out. Okay, it's been long enough now. What I'm going to do is take my snuffer, get it over here, pick up my bag, let the water drain off the side. And then I'm going to take care of my hot fire right here first. And then I will grab them hot handles and of course I can make coffee or whatever out of that hot water right now or utilize it in anything else now don't waste fuel we're going to snuff that out making sure it's fully out it wasn't even though i just put it in sometimes when it's really really hot these things will keep cooking so there's a big old hole there for that rivet where that flapper goes sometimes that and just that unfitting a little bit there'll be a real fine little flame and you'll put that on there and think oh that thing's out i've been put it out 15 minutes and then you'll go to grab that little wire and it'll scald you ask me how i know okay so now let's see what we got for breakfast. Take the bag up and voila, one hash brown and egg omelet ready to go. See we're fully cooked, all ready to go. I could have put cheese in there, I could put salt, pepper, whatever. That easy. Now how about I take and Take a tortilla and drape over the top in that, that last 30 seconds. Or take a tortilla and wrap it up in aluminum foil on a cold day so it's kind of waterproof and slide it into that boiling water one end and then the other end the last two minutes before this. And then open up a warm tortilla, put some salsa, some stuff on it, and then dump this on the top of it. Two eggs and a bag of tater chips. And as you can see, it's a nice omelet. Ready? All you got to do is add cheese to that and you got a cheese omelet. It's super, super simple, easy to do uh, in the morning. The kids can make their own, so to speak, with supervision, of course, but it can be done with all you need is a bag of tater chips, two eggs, a canteen cup, and some water. That's it. Time to eat. Real easy. Now, for a final point about cooking with boiling water, of course, you have the quick heat meals. These meals allow me to just tear up and pour the water directly in the bag and stir it up, then seal it back up and let it coast. Or I can dump it into a bigger pot and let it. Now, this is way too much to cook in just a plain canteen cup. One canteen cup full of water should be, excuse me, sufficiently able to do this because roughly that's what it needs, like one, one and a half cups, and you can easily get that out of a canteen cup. But on the other hand, I can also use that boiling water to cook outside. Now, I just boil that egg. When I get done making that omelet and I set it out, that water is technically still okay. So I could throw coffee in it right now. I could also use it to pour over here in my other cup that I'm carrying that has my coffee and my little sachet ready to go. So I got breakfast. I could also have instant grits sitting there or instant oatmeal. So I'd have eggs, grits, oatmeal, etc. You can combine and make whatever breakfast you need. But the simplest and the cleanest, because when you get done, you still got a clean canteen cup. Now, could I have just dumped that egg and stuff contraption in there and done it? Yeah, but more than likely it would have burned. 
and I could have cooked it, but I'd had to really main monitor my heat, and I'd really have to keep it stirring, etc. By putting it in that bag and just sitting in the water, I could do something else for five minutes. Knowing it's going to take about eight minutes, and then you're going to turn it over and cook it for another two. So in ten minutes, I have an omelet ready to go. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. Hope it was enlightening, and there will be more coming up in mastering the canteen cup. Next time we're going, we, today we talked about steaming. Last one we talked about beverages. And this one we talked about immersion heating. Where either you're going to take pre-made food like a can of SpaghettiOs, put it into a Ziploc bag and sit it in that boiling water. Or simmering water. Don't have to be boiling. Just want to warm it up. I can take fish. I can take crawdads. I can take vegetables. And I can steam them by making an aluminum cup to go over the top and just improvise either a grate or have a grate to sit on top. I can steam vegetables and stuff like that on top of there. Steam zucchini, steam squash, uh, wild edibles that I collect in the field. Not only do I cook them, I sterilize them too, which is a big thing for me. Because you don't know what cow peed on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Big old beautiful patch of wood sorrel in the middle of a cow pasture. Mmm. Yeah. You want to make sure your food's clean. Making this omelet. Now, can you experiment? Absolutely. How about we use... Um, vinegar and salt potato chips or how about barbecue potato chips or whatever see I can improvise around how about I put a big old thing of cheese in there first yeah you can all of that together and make whatever kind of omelet again put this on the stove at home and experiment practice before you bring it out to the field because when you're out here with your buddies you want to make it look smooth you want the nest monk rule. You want to look like the wet, wise old sage woodsman. You are the master of the canteen cut meals. Not going, dang it, what'd that do that time? Experiment at home. So you find all these pitfalls. You find all the uh-ohs when I go, and go get a hamburger. You know, when I really screw it up. And you're going to have a learning curve. But I have faith in you. You can learn. You can do it. And with it, you'll become a master at cooking for yourself and through that for others. Hope you've enjoyed this, guys. If you have, please hit that like, share, and subscribe, and comment. I really appreciate it. Till next time, guys, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.